Hi everyone, so welcome back. We're now going to move on to hearing. Okay, and then, then a couple more recordings and we'll be done. All right, so with that, let's go. I'm going to hide me so you can see this a little better. Um, all right, so anatomy of the ear, right? So let's remember the outside part of the ear. We call that the oracle, right? And then basically the part that's going up to your eardrum is going to be the external auditory canal. Uh, then you have the ear eardrum or the tympanic membrane. Then we have our middle ear bones, so the malleus, the incus, and then the stapes. And then what we'll see is uh, basically our organ for hearing as well as equilibrium. We'll see our semicircular canals, um, and then as well as this thing called the cochlea. Okay, and we'll talk more about those. All right, so the external ear, predominantly its job is simply to collect sound waves. So that's the job of your ear. I mean, think about animals that have very large ears and can hear very well. That's, that's the point of them. If you ever look at, it doesn't really matter, any animal that has large ears, you'll see that they'll even orient their ears toward the sound that it is that they're trying to hear. Okay. The middle ear then is a small air-filled cavity and that contains those ear bones, something called the oval and round windows. We'll talk about those in a second. And then the inner ear, also called the labyrinth, um, because it'll have a lot of different canals. We saw the semicircular canals, as well as that snail shell looking cochlea. Again, we'll talk more about those specifically. All right, so let's just take a look at the external ear. So you can see that here in color. So the auricle or the pinna is basically elastic cartilage covered with skin, as I mentioned to you. Um, animals will orient their ears towards sound. We don't have that capability. Um, I mean, think about what you do when you're trying to pick up on something. Sometimes you can cup your e your hand around your ear so you can hear better, right? Um, then that external auditory canal, it's about an inch of two, right? You have, I think we all know, we got earwax, right? So those are ceruminous glands producing cerumen, the sciency word for earwax. And then that tympanic membrane is the eardrum, right? That's what's going to convey vibrations to our middle and then inner ears. So then our middle ear, you can see that here in this image, is going to consist of uh, basically the eardrum, the again the malleus, incus, stapes. That stapes is going to sit in something called the round window. Basically it's going to vibrate in that round window and by vibrating you can kind of think of like when you have your hand on the surface of water and you kind of like, like move it up and down, it causes ripples in the water. That's basically what it will be doing in that oval window. And here you see that round window. So basically as that stapes pulses in the oval window, that round window will also bulge to kind of equalize that balance, right? So that's where the ripples kind of will come back out. And then you have the auditory or eustachian tube that will go to the back of the upper portion of your throat. Okay, and we, 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 you've all had this experience where uh, you go up in an airplane um, and your ears pop and then you have to swallow to get them to like unclog. Right. Um, that's because when you're doing that, you're opening up this audit the opening to the auditory tube and you're equalizing the pressure here in this middle ear. You have different two little muscles, and you actually have a little bit more, but two muscles in the in the ear, they're tiny little muscles. The stapedius muscle inserts onto the stapes, um, and that's basically to prevent large vibrations, uh, or sorry, large vibrations from the stapes um, being translated into very loud noises. And then the tensor tympani will attach to the malleus, and that'll uh, limit the movements of the malleus as well as stiffen the eardrum, again, to minimize those vibrations. So you're kind of getting the idea that the larger the vibrations, the louder the sound is going to be. And so the, the larger these vibrations, potentially the more damage that can be done to, to delicate cells uh, inside our ear, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, it does take these, these are muscles, so it takes them uh, a, a moment to respond to a loud sound. So they won't help protect the ear from, from like an explosion or like a gunshot, you know, something that's very loud and sudden. Um, however, they will help uh, protect the ear against chronically loud sounds. And we'll see uh, this, these muscles as well as something else in our ear will help us uh, adapt to loudness throughout the day. Um, so you probably have had this experience too. So uh, you you know you're watching TV at night, 
whatever, you're, you're watching some show, you go to bed, and you get up in the morning, and then you turn the TV on, right? I don't know, watch the news, whatever it is. And you turn the TV on, and you're like, oh, man, that is loud. What the heck? Do you ever have that? Well, what's going on is throughout the day, um, you're encountering loud sounds, and your ear is trying to protect itself, and it's going to compensate for all these sounds you're encountering throughout you know, throughout the day. However, while you're asleep, right, it's should, hopefully it's quiet, so it kind of resets itself. It should sort of remind you of like how those the photo pigments even worked. So it resets itself. So now when you turn on a TV, your, your ears are particularly sensitive first thing in the morning. So that sound sounds really loud to you. Okay, so kind of a little interesting fun fact for you guys. Right. And that inner ear is going to be consist of consist of something called a bony labyrinth as well as a membranous labyrinth. Essentially, that bony labyrinth is is the structural part of the labyrinth. It's the actual bone making up the semicircular canals as well as something this cochlea, the snail shell uh, looking thing. And then that membranous labyrinth um, is basically the tubes inside of it uh, made up of membranes. Okay, um, so it's a set of tube like cavities. Okay. The semicircular canals, as well as the thing called the vestibule, which is this area right in here, those are responsible for your equilibrium or your sense of balance. Um, and then this cochlea, this snail shell, is responsible, responsible for hearing. So if you remember back to when we looked at the brain, um, uh, particularly in lab, we looked at something called the vestibulocochlear nerve. That nerve is coming from the vestibule, as well as the cochlea, you know, put them together, what have you got? Stibulo cochlear nerve, right? All right. That membranous labyrinth is basically sacs inside that bony labyrinth, as I mentioned. Um, that bony labyrinth contains a fluid called paralymph, and then the membranous labyrinth uh, contains a slightly different fluid called endolymph. Okay. Oop. All right. So how do we actually hear? All right. So in this, so again, hearing is going to be uh, due to this the structure here, little snail shell looking thing. And I'm just going to move my cursor over for a second. The snail shell, snail shell looking thing called the cochlea. And if we cut that cochlea, like took a little piece out of it, you'll notice there's three different chambers in it. Those three chambers have these names that you know to us are not very helpful, but this is what they're called. Um, they're called. Ooh, they're called the scala vestibuli, scala tympani, and the cochlear duct. Sometimes that cochlear duct is also called the scala media. So if we zoom in, here's another look at that. So again, here's that vestibule and nerves coming off of it, uh, the vestibular branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve, and then here will be the cochlear branch of that vestibulocochlear nerve. And here are those different chambers. Okay. So again, imagine like these are spiraling, you know, back and forth like that. We've just removed part of the tubes. Okay. And basically what's happening, so as vibrations come in on um, that external auditory meatus, they'll cause that tympanic membrane to vibrate, which causes the malleus to vibrate, which causes the incus to vibrate, which causes the stapes to vibrate. And as I mentioned, it, that stapes in that oval window is vibrating similar to you putting your hand on the surface of water and kind of you know, moving it up and down, it'll cause ripples. So it causes all these ripples to occur. And then, you know, it's a snail shell, so it gets to the end, the snail shell, and then it goes around the bend. It's called that bend part, right? The end is called the helico helicotrema. And then the vibrations come back around and then out that, that round window. Okay. So basically, as this fluid vibrates, it's going to cause vibrations in the scala media. Okay, so basically it causes that to move. In the scala media, the, it'll vibrate at certain frequencies. More specifically, the vibrations of the scala media here closer to this uh, stapes, it'll vibrate to high frequency sounds. And then as you go further away from the stapes, it'll vibrate um, to lower and lower frequency sounds. So basically the, the range of our hearing is going to be based on the, the size of the scala media. Okay, um, and high frequency sound, sounds, since they're closest to the stapes, are often the first to go as we get older. Um, so that, that's younger individuals will hear higher pitched sounds like mosquitoes a lot better than someone who's older. 
oops, wrong way. Okay, so here's just another look at these different canals. So here's that Scala vestibuli, Scala tympani, and then here's that Scala media. And you'll notice there's a little structure in there. And this little guy is the one that is going to be doing all the work. Okay, that's this blown up. So this little structure that I was just mentioning is called the organ of corti. And what you'll see are these hair cells. So we saw hair cells when we looked at olfaction and taste. And again, we have, again, these similar cells that have these cilia on them. Okay. So what's going on is that the tips of these hair cells are, are uh, inserted into a membrane called the tectorial membrane. Okay. It's basically this gelatinous kind of membrane. So as um, and their base is on something called the basilar mem membrane. So as the vibrations come through, those hair cells are going to get bent because they're stuck in this membrane. Okay, oops, go back up. So let me just give you an idea of how this works. So I'm going to draw for you and hopefully um, my computer will work with me. I'm kind of running low on memory. All right, so let's say here I have a hair cell. Okay, and then here are the, its individual little hairs. Okay, there's its nucleus. Okay, um, what you're going to notice is that going from, so this is embedded in that tectorial membrane up here. Okay, so basically, um, so this, this largest hair of the hair cells embedded in the tectorial membrane and each one of these sort of hairs is going to be bound to the other one via these tiny protein strands called tip links okay these tip links so let me let me just kind of zoom in on these two all right so i'm just going to zoom in on those two so here's the one and here's the one next to it. Okay. What you're going to see is that actually those tip links, there are ion channels and there's a gate, like a little physical thing, a gate on that ion channel. And basically that tip link is actually going to, you know, so here's this tip link. It goes from the, that ion channel to the next little hair, that next little hair. Okay. So that hopefully makes sense. And what happens is as the vibrations come through and these hair cells get bent, particularly that tall one, right? It's kind of bending over. Oops, that's my pen, right? What happens is that that tip link gets taut and it opens the ion channel. So now positive ions can go into the cell. Right? So again, as these tip links are embedded in the tectorial membrane, right? as that membrane vibrates, these will bend. And as they bend, that tip link gets pulled, opening up ion channels. All right? And you open up these ion channels, and a positive ion goes into the cell. That'll cause depolarization. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to erase this. All right, so just erase that. Now let's just take a look at those hair, the individual hairs on that cell again. Okay, so one of the remember I was just mentioning to you a second ago that um, the stapedius muscle um, and and the the tensor tympani muscle will adjust the stiffness of different parts of that middle ear to help prevent damage to these little hair cells here that we're just talking about, right? Due to loud sounds. Well, the hair cells themselves have a mechanism to help protect them from damage. All right, so we just saw a second ago, you know, as this uh, uh, hair cell that's embedded in this tectorial membrane is bent, right, um, it'll open up the ion channels, right, due to that, due to that um, tip length, right? Now, here's the deal. So here's that ion channel right here right now if what ends up happening is these remember this is a membrane a cell membrane and things can move 
So this will actually, if it's dealing with like lots of uh, loud sounds or loud sounds for a longer period of time, I should say, it'll actually move down that that hair on that hair cell, so that instead of being instead of this tip link being tight and causing that ion channel to open, now when it's down here, it's slack again and that ion channel is closed. So that's another way that the hair cell is going to try to protect itself from chronically loud sounds. Okay. So again, as, the, as these individual hairs on the hair cell are embedded in the tectorial membrane, as that tectorial membrane vibrates, it'll cause this tip link to pull tight, opening up these ion channels, and then a positive ion will go into the cell, and that'll cause depolarization, sending a signal to the brain. And then your brain, it's up to your brain to interpret that signal. However, under chronically loud sounds, this tip link will actually migrate down that hair so that that tip link becomes slack again and that ion channel remains closed. This is another way that your, your ear will compensate. This is another reason why your TV sounds so loud in the morning. After rest, after being quiet long enough, this will go back, this, this ion channel will return to its resting position. All right, hopefully that made sense to you guys. I'm gonna stop this recording here. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me.